Welcome to our lesson on pastry basics and it always fascinates me how there's a whole world of pastries out there and they're really versatile and a lot of them can be used for both sweet and savory treats. Just a slight shift in the quantities of butter or liquid or flour can take you all the way from light layers of phyllo pastry used for making things like syrupy baklava and spanakopita to choux pastry that's used for eclairs and profiteroles and then there's short crust pastry that's used for tarts and of course the beautiful fluffy pillowiness of puff pastry. Both phyllo pastry and puff pastry are really fiddly to make at home and usually even the most avid bakers will just buy them. But in the case of short crust pastry, it's really, really simple and there's even a helpful ratio that you can use. And that is two parts of flour to one part of butter. So in this case, I'm using 140 grams of flour and 70 grams of butter. And I'm just adding in about 40 grams of almond flour along with 100 grams of plain flour to make up the 140 grams of flour. And the almonds give it a nice richness and creaminess. And then I'm adding in 70 grams of cold butter. And you can see that I've just cut it into cubes because that way it's incorporated into the flour mixture more easily. Then just a little pinch of salt and a teaspoon of vanilla. And you can use all sorts of flavors when you're making short crust pastry, especially a sweet one, which this is. You can use lemon zest or rosemary, and one of my favorites is lavender. And because it's a sweet short crust pastry, I now need to add in just two tablespoons of icing sugar. And you could also use caster sugar. I just prefer the finer crumb of the icing sugar. So in that goes. Then finally we add in the yolk of one egg, which will just help bind everything together. Okay. And if you don't have a food processor, it's really not a problem at all. You can just cut the butter into the flour mixture using a knife or a palette knife and then slowly mix it together with your fingertips until it's the consistency of breadcrumbs and then just bring it all together into a nice neat round of pastry. And just mix it gently until it's just combined. If you over mix it, then you'll end up with tough pastry because the gluten will be over activated. You can see that it's just started coming together into one ball of dough. So now we need to take it out, and wrap it in some cling film, and then pop it in the fridge to rest for a few minutes because the glutens in the pastry need to relax. Just gently press it down to a little circle quite flat and round, that makes it easier to roll out later. And then cover it completely with the cling film and then pop it in the fridge. Now that our pastry is resting in the fridge, it's time to make the filling for the tart. This lemon tart is completely effortless to make, but it's got so many things to fall in love with. It's exquisitely simple and also if you're entertaining it stores perfectly at room temperature for a couple of days beforehand. To start off with I'm adding one and a half tins of sweetened condensed milk and I just love that creamy ribbon as it falls into the bowl. And I always think that pretty much anything that starts off with condensed milk as an ingredient is going to be good. A teaspoon of corn flour which will just help the mixture to set and then we need two egg yolks and one whole egg. So in goes the whole egg and then we'll separate two egg yolks. So the eggs will help the tart to set and the egg yolks add a lovely richness and depth of flavor. And of course we can't have a lemon tart without lots of lovely lemoniness. So I'm going to add in the zest of a lemon and then the juice of about three lemons.
And the easiest way to do this is just to put a little sieve over the batter bowl and then squeeze the lemons over that so that it catches all the pips. I've also made this tart using limes and it was a really nice twist on a simple classic. It gave it a little bit of exoticness. Then all we do is give it a good whisk until everything's combined and you'll get this beautifully buttery coloured mixture that you just know is going to taste amazing. It's all nicely incorporated and it's really beautifully glossy and smooth. Now I'm going to retrieve our pastry parcel from the fridge because it should be ready for rolling out. So our pastry is quite nice and firm now and I'm ready to roll it out and line our tart tin and the tart tin's just been lightly greased. I always find that rolling the pastry out between two sheets of baking paper saves you the job of sprinkling flour and ending up with it in every corner of your kitchen. Just flip it every now and then so that it, you get a nice even spread of the pastry and you should end up with kind of abstract circle. And you want it to be about half a centimetre thick and then it'll be ready to line your tart tin. Once the pastry's in we add in a layer of baking paper and then we fill it with these really clever little ceramic baking beans and we pop it in the oven and we give it what we call a blind bake which just means baking the tart without a proper filling and that just helps your pastry to cook nicely so that you end up with really beautiful crisp golden pastry. So it's really nice and thin. So now I'll just gently flour my rolling pin and the pastry just so that it doesn't stick. And I'll show you a clever way to get your pastry from the paper to your tart tin. Just gently guide the pastry onto your rolling pin and roll it up. And don't worry if there's any cracks or breaks, you can easily patch them up once the pastry's in the tin. And as you go along, just add a little bit of flour to the underside of the pastry so that it doesn't stick together as it's rolling up. And then carefully unravel your pastry off the rolling pin onto the tart tin. And then very carefully take those sides and tuck them and fold them into the sides of the tart tin. A little trick that I like to use is to take a little ball of excess dough and just use it to press into the ridges of the tin so that the pastry is definitely flush with the sides. Finally, I find that the most effective way to snip off any excess pastry from the edges of the tart tin is just to roll your rolling pin straight over the top and it automatically just chops off any extra bits of pastry and gives you a nice, neat and tidy edge. And the final thing we need to do before we're ready to blind bake the pastry case, just gently prick the base of your tart a few times with a fork and this prevents any air bubbles forming while the tart's baking so that you don't get any uneven rising in the pastry base. Another really nifty thing to know is that I could quite easily place this tart tin as it is with the pastry in it straight into my freezer and save it for a rainy day. Or you can make a double batch of pastry and line two tart tins and keep one and use one. So we just gently press the baking paper down into the tart shell and then fill it with the ceramic baking beans. And these weigh the pastry bottom down so that it doesn't bubble up when it's cooking. And this goes into a 180 degree oven for about 15 minutes. First of all for 10 minutes with the baking beans in and then for another five minutes with the baking beans taken out. And that way the tart shell really has a chance to be beautifully crisp and golden. Okay. I'll just gather the paper and pull the beans out. So we'll just leave the tart shell in the oven for another five minutes so that it becomes really nice and crisp and golden. Just 
gently pour your lovely buttery lemony filling straight into the tart shell and then just carefully even it out using the back of your spatula or the back of a tablespoon and then the tart goes straight back into the oven for between 40 and 50 minutes or until it's just set. I've had so much fun walking you through the art of baking. I really hope that you've been inspired and that you now have the confidence to show baking who's boss.